Hi everyone, today on the bench I've got an ASUS ROG Strix V350F gaming motherboard. It's an AIM4 board from ASUS, not too expensive, actually one of the most budget-friendly models. This board arrived with a no-post issue, so our goal today is to identify the fault and hopefully bring it back to life. At first glance, the board looks pretty clean. I don't see any obvious damage, no burn components, no knocked off parts, nothing suspicious. But of course, visual inspection is enough. We'll check everything under the microscope and measure the key power rail resistance before attempting power on. Now let's take resistance reading on the main power rails. So the first has 3.3 volts and we have almost a kilo ohm here, not bad. 5 volts, 1.4 kilo ohms, good, 12 volts. And here we have kilo ohms as well, minus 12. Mega ohms, 5 USB. And we have kilo ohms here, okay. So there's a memory coil over here. We have no short. What else do we have? And we don't have, okay, we have a this coil here. I'm not sure, but probably it's 1.8 volts or um, the power of uh, PCH. So 600 ohms, it's not bad. Um, let's try to power it on and to see if we have success in powering it on. Okay, around. There shouldn't be much activity, and indeed we get around 30 milliamps. Nothing unusual. Pressing the power button does nothing. But the RGB backlight does turn on, which is a good sign. At least some rails are working. Okay, let's put the CPU in. Let's see if we have any changes. Okay, we're going to use Ryzen 3 3200G, as usual, on the cheapest Ryzen CPUs. And I guess we need to plug in at least one memory stick. And I'm not sure. Okay. It's here, and so we need the A2, I guess. All right. Oh, another way. Try to insert it backwards. Done. Okay, power it on. We have slightly more uh, current, like 85 milliamps. Pressing power it on. Power on button. Here we have a debug LEDs, CPU, I guess, and is it getting hot or not? I guess no, but it has a two and a half, two and four, two and four amps, and yeah, it's getting hot. Let's try to plug it in the HDMI cable, HDMI cable. Yes, the capture card is okay. All right, we'll plug it in over here. And power it on. And we'll see the capture card here. Okay, let's put the heat sink to the CPU, just not to overheat it. I don't think that we will have a post screen since we have a CPU LED light up over here. So I guess something with the power up sequence. Let's clear the CMOS. First check the battery, it's a healthy 3 volts. Let's check the voltage and we have a good voltage, 3 volts. Short those two pins and it's clearing CMOS memory. So then we can plug in the battery back and let's try to power it on. And now we have a DRAM LED here, and the CPU LED, the red CPU LED, and that's it. At this point, it's starting to look like it could be a BIOS or firmware related issue, or perhaps something wrong in the CPU power communication path. Time to take a closer look under the microscope, especially around the CPU socket area to see if anything is damaged or missing. Let's move to the microscope. Okay, let's inspect everything. So this is the bias area. 
And it looks to me that the bias was desoldered or whatever, I don't know, like hit it because uh, it looks like everything here is was heated up. Like those two resistors, they're not looking good. I mean, they doesn't look that they are soldered here during the manufacture, like those two. So um, we'll see, let's inspect other areas. Maybe we will find something. Flux or not? I don't know. Doesn't look like it's flux. So this board will definitely worth cleaning in the ultrasonic cleaner. holes clean, no torn paths, no blown traces, no missing components. At this point we probably need to remove the heat sinks and check the VRM area underneath. So let's see it under the microscope. This is unbelievably dirty. It was not clean whatsoever. Wow. Okay, let me clean it a little bit. Okay, cleaned. I don't see any obvious physical failure in the MOSFETs. The VRM controller is an ASP 1106 GUW, looks perfectly fine. So now the next logical step is checking the board view to verify how we can properly connect to the header and reprogram the BIOS chip. That's likely the root cause of this no post issue.
This is getting messy. Honestly, it's quicker to just dissolve the chip and program it directly. Okay, let's see if we have any changes. So I have removed the CPU before using the hot air, just not to overheat the CPU because the BIOS is breaking at the CPU socket, so just in case. Um, let's power it on. Okay, DRAM LED, CPU, and VGA, DRAM LED, CPU, DRAM, okay, CPU back, and VGA, huh, and boot. Okay, so we're booting. Like if we plug in the capture card, let me check. Do I have anything? All right, so let's power it off. Power on again. Okay, pressing the power button. Let's try to see if we have a picture. Picture over here. In, yes, we do have a picture. Oh, well, finally. That was an easy fix. It looks like someone downloaded the BIOS capsule file directly from the ASUS website and flashed it into the chip without extracting the BIOS body. ASUS distributes BIOS inside a capsule and you must extract the actual binary before flashing. If you program the capsule as is, the motherboard simply won't boot. But now the board is alive and posting correctly. I will still clean it thoroughly and probably remove the PCH heatsink considering how much dust I found inside the VRM zone. I'm curious what's hiding underneath. But overall it's fixed, it boots and it looks good. This motherboard is officially repaired and ready to go. If you enjoy real diagnostics, real repairs and real results, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and until next time, see ya!